Hi, welcome to Tuts Plus. My name is Bob Flisser. When you have a lot of data on a worksheet and you want to extract some of that data to use on other worksheets, the VLOOKUP, MATCH, and INDEX functions are great ways to do it. These functions work in any version of Excel on Windows or Mac, and they also work on the web in Google Sheets and also in the web versions of Excel. With the VLOOKUP function, and the V stands for vertical, you have data arranged down columns. And by the way, there is also an HLOOKUP function where you have data arranged across rows, H is horizontal, and it works the exact same way as VLOOKUP, so there's really no need for me to cover that in this tutorial. You can grab actual data from a worksheet like you see here and use it in other sheets, whereas the match and index functions are really concerned with the positioning of data, where your data are located rather than what is the actual value of the data. If you want to follow along in this tutorial using your own workbook, go right ahead. If you'd like to use the sheet that I have here on screen, you can see it's called VLOOKUP example. You could download this from the Tuts Plus website right here on the page where you're watching this tutorial. And before we actually start clicking around and writing formulas, I want to give you a little bit of info on how VLOOKUP works. VLOOKUP links two different tables, and they could be on the same worksheet or more likely on different worksheets, even in different workbooks, using a unique identifier. And the unique identifier that we're going to use in this tutorial is going to be an order number. But in other situations, it could be other things. You can think of it sort of like as a serial number. If you work with databases, you might be familiar with the concept of a primary key. So with this table in mind, let me explain how the syntax works. Like any function, we start off with an equal sign, and then you have the name of the function, VLOOKUP, and open a parenthesis. There are three required arguments and one optional argument. The first argument is what's called the lookup value, and that's that unique identifier that we were talking about. And in our example, that's going to be the order number. Now, because you have to have commas separating the arguments in any function, after you put in the lookup value, you type in a comma. And then the second argument is the table range. And in our example, that's going to be the entire table. But keep in mind, it doesn't always have to be that. Then we put in a comma, and the third argument is the column number. Now, let's say we want to get the sale amount, and you can see here that's the last column in this table. In this instance, that's column number eight. Now, don't get that confused with the fact that you can see here it's column H. There's no law that says that the table has to start in column A. So let's say, for example, if we start the table in column B, then the sale column is still going to be the eighth column, but it's going to be in column I instead of column H. So that's why we're referring to the actual column number of the data table, not the column of the worksheet. Anyway, after you put in the column number, you put in a comma, and then that optional argument at the end is true or false. And this could be a little confusing. In this instance, we're going to say false. And what that means is, is this. False means don't give me an approximation. Give me an exact amount. True means an approximation is OK. Now, there are times when an approximation is all right, but when we're looking at order numbers and when we want to plug in an order number and find the sale amount of that order number, we really don't want an approximation. And then, of course, we close the function with a matching parenthesis. One other thing, because we're going to put this entire table in a formula, we need to make sure that we're referring to the table with an absolute reference because we're going to put in the VLOOKUP function and then we want to autofill down, that is, we want to copy and paste down the formula all the way down a couple of hundred rows. Understanding absolute references is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but suffice to say, it could be a little messy when you're using an absolute reference in a long formula. So what I find it's easier to do is to create a range name. When you give a name to a range, like to this whole table that we have, then you could use that name in your formulas. First, I'll show you how to create a range name in Excel, and it works the same way in Windows or Mac. And then I'll show you how to create a range name in Google Sheets. Now, the range itself, you have a choice. You can have it include the column headers, or you can have it be just the data below the column headers. 
In the written version of this tutorial, I included the column headers. So just to be a little different this time, I'm going to include only the data and not the actual column headers. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to click over here on cell A5. So that's the first cell of actual data. And I want to select down and across to the last cell here. So in Windows, I'll press Control Shift End. If you're using a Mac, you want to press Command Shift End. And you see that selects all the way down and across to the last cell. Now to apply the name, I click up here in the name box. Now not on the drop down, but on the actual box here. And when you do that, you see that cell reference gets highlighted. And I'm just going to call it data. You could call it almost anything you want. You can't have spaces or dashes in the name though. And you're limited to 33 characters. So I'll just call this data and press the enter key. And there it is. You can see that data is up there in the name box. And we know that works because I can click somewhere over here. And then when I click this down arrow and choose data, you can see it's selected. And again, I did not include the column headers. Creating range names is a little different in Google Sheets. So here I have the same exact worksheet and you can see I'm in my web browser. So I'll click on the same first bit of data. We can't select from a cell down and across in Google Sheets. You have to select first across and then down or first down and then across. So I'll press control shift right arrow or if you're on the Mac command shift right arrow. And now I'll press control shift down arrow or on the Mac command shift down arrow. Now that I've done that, I go up to the data menu and over here I choose named and protected ranges. And then in this box over here, I'll call it data and then click done. And you can see it's over there. And then I'm done with that. And I can close this little panel with that X. So in this tutorial, this is the only thing that's different between Google Sheets and Excel. Okay, so let's enter some formulas already. Enough talking. Right now I'm on the source data sheet. Let's click on the sale amounts sheet. And you can see I already have the order numbers. And what we want to do is use the order number to look up the sales amount like I was talking about. So let's start entering the formula. Let's say equals V lookup. And if you get that little syntax there, you don't have to type the whole thing. Just press the tab key. And it gives us a little bit of syntax help. And the look of value we know is that order number. So I click that and I type a comma. Now the table array, that's the table we had. So we don't have to go back to the source data sheet and select all that and make it an absolute reference because we already called it data. So all I have to do is type the word data. Now, if you did not create the range name, you will have to go to the source data sheet and select the whole thing and make it an absolute reference. Also, Excel understands that, oh yes, I did create that range name, so it's in here. I'll show you also a little trick. Let me just backspace over that. Let's say I have a lot of range names or I created that range name a long time ago. I don't remember what it is. I could always press the F3 key on the keyboard and get the paste name box and just double click it. And I'll type a comma and then it asks me for the column index number. We said before that's column eight. That's where the sales figure is. Put in a comma and here it's even giving us a little syntax help. Do we want true or do we want false? We want an exact match. So you could type the word false or you could double click it and it puts it in. Close a parenthesis, enter it and it's 40. And in fact, if we go back here, source data, we can see, oh yes, indeed, that's correct. So let's go back here and we want to autofill this. So click the cell. And if you're not all that familiar with autofilling, you notice that there's a little dot in the lower right corner of the cell. When you put the mouse pointer over the dot, the mouse pointer becomes this little crosshair. And even if you know autofill, here's something that most people don't know. You don't have to click and drag this down for 200 whatever rows. All you have to do is double click the crosshair and it fills in all the way down. So you can scroll all the way down and you can see it's filled in all the way. That's because there are no gaps in column A. If there was a gap somewhere in column A, then that autofill would just kind of stop where that gap is. If you want to practice this on your own, you could go here maybe to column C or column D and go and use VLOOKUP to find maybe people's last names or the states. So let's take a look at the match function. We can click the match tab here in the worksheet. As I said earlier, the match function isn't really concerned with the value of data, but location of data. Actually, it's kind of like the game of Jeopardy. 
you tell it what the value is and the match function tells you where the value is. Kind of if you think of maybe you're walking down the street and you say to somebody, oh, where is number 135? And they tell you, oh, number 135 is the fourth building down. So let's talk a little bit about the syntax of the match function. We say equals match, open the parenthesis, right? Just like any function. And then you put in the lookup value. That's just like what we were talking about before. That's going to be the order number. Put in a comma. Then you have the table range. Table range is the same as what we were talking about before. In our case, we're going to use the entire table. You put in a comma, and then you enter the type. Now, what's that type all about? When you have that value you're looking for, you may have a value that's just above it or just below it. And to determine whether or not either of those are acceptable, that type you can put in a negative one, a zero, or a one. Negative one means you'll choose the number that's the closest above it. If you choose a positive one, it's the closest number below it. If you choose zero, it means you want an exact match. Also, with the match function, you have to be aware of whether your data are sorted in any particular order. So you have to have data sorted in descending order to use the negative one option. You have to have your data sorted in ascending order if you're going to use the positive one option, and you can see that's the default. Or if you don't care if it's in one order or another, then you can use a zero. Now, since we're looking for only one piece of data, we're looking for that order number, we need to go and define another range name. So let's go back to source data, and we're going to be concerned just with the order number. So we already have a range name that's for the entire table. Now we just want a range name for the data going down column A. So kind of like what we did before, you want to click on cell A5, press Control shift down arrow or Command shift down arrow on the Mac. Let's go up here, click inside the name box, and I'm going to call this order underscore number. Underscores are okay, dashes are not, spaces are not okay, and press enter. If you're doing this in Google Sheets, use the same procedure that I showed you just before. So let's go back to the match worksheet. And we'll put in the function, we'll say equals match, open the parenthesis, lookup value, we said that's the order number, comma, the lookup array, right, that's what we just put in, the order number, if you want, you could press the F3 key, and you can see there's the two range names, double click, type in a comma, and we have our values in ascending order, so I'm going to choose the one, double click it, close the parenthesis, and enter it. And now we can see that order 1013 is in the 13th position. Now, if you had included the column headers, then this would be showing 14. And we could eyeball this. Let's go back here. And we can see there is order 1013. If we count from the top, that is the 13th one down. Finally, let's talk about the index function. And I'm going to click on the index tab of this worksheet. The index function is kind of like the opposite of the match function, and it deals with two dimensions. It deals with rows and columns. So we tell it, here's the row number and the column number I'm looking for, which means a particular cell. Now return to me the value that's in that particular cell. So let's take a brief look at the syntax of the index function. We say equals index, open the parenthesis. First argument is the table range or data range. Again, it's the entire table that we've been looking at, put in a comma, and then you have the row number, put in a comma, and then optionally the column number. Now this is a little weird because the official documentation tells us that column number is optional, but it's really the row number could also be optional. And what that means is when you have a large table like what we're working with, you do want a row number and a column number. But let's say you only have a single row, well, then you don't need a column number. Or if you only have a single column, then you don't need a row number. So let's put in the function. And I'm going to be here on cell C6. So I'm going to say equals index, open up the parenthesis. And just like before, the range is the entire data range. You can see it finds it for us. So we put in a comma, and we want row 9, comma, column 3. Close the parenthesis, enter it, and now we can see that that is somebody's last name. And let's take a look. Go back to source data, and we can see there. It's the ninth row down and third column over. And if we go back here, 
And let's say, just for example, maybe I want to go to row 13 and see it's already changing column four, then I have the state. So if I go back over here, I can see, all right, there it is. This is row 13, column four. So having these three functions that can look at a large worksheet and extract value and positioning of data are really great tools. This way you can have one sheet that has all of the data in the universe and then individual sheets where you're picking up just those pieces of data that you need. And of all of the parts of Excel that people ask me about, VLOOKUP is far and away the most common. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Once again, for Tuts Plus, my name is Bob Flisser, and I'll see you down the road.